Brew is a popular package manager for Mac OS. You use it to install server-style and Linux-oriented software, which distinguishes it from working with the Apple App Store for installing more desktop-oriented programs. The advantage to installing software with Brew is that if you ever want to upgrade the software or fully remove it from your computer, the package manager tools are your best answer. In many cases, upgrading a downloaded install program involves manually uninstalling the old version and then installing the new one. Package managers handle all of that for you. Tell them what you want and they make it happen. If you don't already have Brew on your Mac, you need to install it first. Direct your browser to the Brew website at brew.sh. Here you'll find a Ruby script that will handle the installation for you. If you don't know what Ruby is, don't worry about it. It won't affect your ability to use the tool. So I'm just going to double click this script right here. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to copy this with command C. And now I just need to run this in my terminal. So I'll run my terminal. Once I have the terminal window open, I'll just use command V to paste in that command that I copied a minute ago. I'll hit enter and it's going to run this script. So basically what it's doing is it's running bash, which is a shell that used to be the standard one on Mac OS. They recently changed it to Z shell with Catalina, but we can still run things in the bash shell by specifying the shell that we want to use. So forward slash bin bash is going to run bash. And then we're going to pass something into that. So the script that we're going to pass into it is at a website and you can see the URL for that here. So essentially what's happening here is we're just going to download this shell script and run it in bash to do this. I need elevated privileges. So I need to type in my password here and it will tell you all of the things that it's about to do. And then at the bottom, it says Xcode command line tools will be installed. So that's important. You won't see that if you've already installed the Xcode command line tools. Let's press return to continue, as it says at the bottom. And the installation is in progress. This is likely going to take a while, so why don't I check back with you once all of this is downloaded. I've installed Brew, now it's time to use Brew to install MongoDB. So to do this, just type in Brew, tap, mongodb forward slash brew press enter and that should finish pretty quickly but this wasn't the installation this is just installing the ability the actual capability to install mongodb so now we're ready for the actual install so let's do brew install mongodb B dash community and I'll put an at symbol here and let's do 4.2 that will get us the latest version of MongoDB we have now successfully installed MongoDB on Mac OS the next thing you're generally want going to be able to do is to start and stop the Mongo server that we just installed. So let me type in Mongo D. So the D is short for daemon and a daemon is just a program that runs without anybody having to log in. It basically runs by itself. And that's generally what you use in production is the daemon. What we're doing is we're running it from the command prompt. So I'll type in Mongo D and I'll hit enter and it will try to start, but it will tell me that it can't. So if you read through all these messages down at the bottom, you can see it was exiting. It couldn't do it. It couldn't start. So the problem with this is that it doesn't have the ability to write database files to the path that it's expecting. And you can see right here, it says 
data directory forward slash data forward slash db not found. So that's the default, but that would put it in the root folder of our hard drive, which is generally a no-no on the Mac side. So what we need is a way to actually start this with a different path. So what I'll do is I'll make sure that I'm in my home folder and I'll make a folder here called mongo-data. And now I'll restart it again. I'll type in mongo-db-path.forward-slash-mongo-data. And this time it will work. And at this point, you have effectively started MongoD. To stop it, press Control C. You can restart it again with the same command. Just press up arrow. It starts again, and now we can shut it down one more time with Control C. So now you're ready to continue. Why don't we go ahead and run it? This time I won't stop it. And now we are all set and you're ready to move on to the next section. If you found value in this video, if you learned something new, help me out with a like and subscribe. For more videos on software development and DevOps from a developer's perspective, check us out at maddevskills.com or on Twitter at devskills.